when you're ready to operate by faith, you can see God show up. And you know, God wants to, he wants to work miracles in our life. He wants to do things through us, but there's an ingredient that he needs from us. And it's our faith. Bible teaches us that fear is a big issue, that there will come a day where men's hearts will fail them for fear. Faith can change your story. We're all living out a story right now. And, and not everybody lives the good story. We can live our own story. The world can live its own story. Satan wants you to live the wrong story. God's written a story for you. The, the biggest issue isn't trying to, to do something great. The biggest issue that many times we face is just believing, can God do it? When we allow fear to infiltrate our minds and our conversations and our daily lives and our activities, the, the church that God intends to be the greatest moving powerful force in the end time immobilizes. And God is saying, come on, come on. Don't be afraid. Someone has got to tell themselves in that season, I shall not fear. Most people, even Christians, decide what they're going to do by what they see first. And if you decide whether you're going to do what God says do on the front end because you see it, then you're not exercising faith and you have canceled out seeing God move. You see, faith flourishes in the absence of fear. Fear is the substance of things that you would hate to happen. Fear is the substance of things that you would hate to happen. But faith is the substance of things that you hope will happen. Do you see the shift? That if we get focused on, and it's the enemy's job in 2023 to shift our focus away from all of the promises that God has given us. But God is in control of the life that is submitted to him by faith. Father, I need you to be in control of this. I'm giving you permission to invade this area of my life. When I put my faith in God, it releases the power of God to begin to work and manifest in my life. If I want the mountain to move, what did Jesus say I need? I need to speak to the mountain and believe that it will be cast into the sea. But God's call comes to us in the midst of all that and brings us back to center and say you're focusing on the wrong thing focus on faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and so it's okay for us to hope for some great things because it redirects our attention from the thing that we are afraid of to the thing that we're hoping God is going to do it's all right to hope some people give hope a bad name hope there's something wrong with hope it's okay to hope because Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Somewhere in the midst of hope, you begin to believe that God is giving you hope for a good reason. God is opening a door that you couldn't see before because you were so locked in. You had autofocus locked in on fear. But God said, we're going to disconnect and reconnect to hope. Because if you get focused on hope, something's going to happen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So fear brings an absence of potential. But faith opens a door to God's promise in our life. Faith opens a door for God to say, now get ready to see what I'm going to do. Get ready. Come on. Get digging in the word because there's promises there that have yet to be received and I'm ready to receive it. Where you've got fear, you have emotions that are out of control. You'll have panic. You'll have anger. You'll have people doing things they would never normally do because faith's not in control. Fear is in control. The Bible abounds with people who triumph through faith. A whole litany of people who decided to trust God over themselves, over other people, and over their circumstances. The beauty of faith's triumph is that you get divine approval. It doesn't mean everything goes smoothly, but it says of all the others who are people of faith that they triumph because they got a divine okay. They got a God stamp of approval. And when you get the highest approval possible in creation, then that means you are victorious and you are successful, regardless of how the circumstances are at any given moment. I wish I could tell you that a life of faith means a problemless life, but that's not the world in which we live. That's heaven. On earth, there are going to be ups and downs, but you still can be approved where God says, you did it. And there's nothing that will make you feel better, 
or be better than the divine approval of God. So let's get divine approval because we're going to believe him. Even when believing him is the last thing we want to believe. Walk by faith, not by sight. So that you can be part of the others who are approved of God. Let us run the race that is before us and never give up. Now, the Bible tells us that life is like a race. It's like a marathon. Unfortunately, very few people finish the race of life well. We get discouraged. We get distracted. We get hurt. We get sidelined. And very few people actually make it to the end of life finishing well. We give up and we end our lives with unrealized dreams. By faith, we move forward even when we do not know what's ahead. We take our faith from the Word of God and we know the destination is clear. Faith says that what God has promised is going to happen. And it's so certain that it's almost as if it's already happened. Faith treats things that are hoped for as a reality. That's what Hebrews 11.1 1 means when it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, so she was unclean, unclean for 12 years. The only thing worse would be to have leprosy, to be unclean. At least the leper could get outside. At least the leper could, could, could go among other lepers. She could not. She was, she was holed up in her room. Twelve years. She was quarantined for twelve years. Not three or four months. Nobody. Except someone made it there to help her. I'm, 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 because of what is said here, I, I know someone was there to help her. She'd suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. Now I want to talk about that. She heard of Jesus. So what did she hear? Well, we know what he preached. We know, beginning with Luke chapter 4, in his own hometown of Nazareth, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's anointed me to preach. He's, ano he's anointed me to teach. He's anointed me to heal. Glory to God. He's anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the great jubilee. So he, he literally said to those people, I am your great jubilee. Blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. Captive man, you don't have to be captive anymore. Poor man, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, poor man. What's the gospel to a poor man? To not be poor anymore. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. We are conquerors. If we do what God tells us to do, the victory is already in our hands. And we should have confidence in the promise of this almighty God that we serve. Let me remind you again that all faith is based on a promise from God. Faith is a nebulous thought to most people, but it is a very simple concept. God said it, you believe it and you act upon it. When you do that, you are exercising your faith. It's not anything more than that. It's not anything less than that. Faith is believing and acting upon God's word. But God is saying to us today that by faith, if you'll just put your faith in God. If you'll say, God, I'm not looking at the circumstances about my money anymore, but I'm trusting you. You said, Father, that you'd bless me when I come in and you bless me when I go out. Father, I'm not putting, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not letting the doctor's report write my next chapter of my story. Instead, I am going to put my faith in Jesus, my healer. Jesus, 
You are my healer. By your stripes, I have been made whole. I'm not listening to discouragement. I'm not listening to fear. I am not giving the pen of my next chapter to Satan or the doctor or the bad report. When you put your faith in God, despite the circumstances, you are pivoting your story. See, when we say things like God is in control, know this, that is a declaration of faith. What am I saying? I'm saying, you know, God only has it when we give it to him. We can live our own story, but God is in control of the life that is submitted to him by faith. Father, I need you to be in control of this. I'm giving you permission to invade this area of my life. When I put my faith in God, it releases the power of God to begin to work and manifest in my life. If I want the mountain to move, what did Jesus say I need? I need to speak to the mountain and believe that it will be cast into the sea. It's by faith. To be persistent in life, to finish what you start, you're going to have to conserve your emotional energy for the future, not for the past. Does that make sense? Focus all your emotional energy on the future, not worry and regret and guilt of the past. So you got to let go of grudges against other people. You've got to let go of guilt and you've got to let go of grief. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 43 verse 18, don't dwell on the past because it will be a distraction. You want to finish well? Second thing you and I have to do is Remember the reward. Remember the reward that God has out there in front of us. You cannot run the race well without an eye on the finish line. If you're gonna finish well in life, you have to remind yourself. I have to remind myself of, of why we do what we do. Otherwise, you're gonna end up thinking, why even make the effort? The why behind what you do determines how long you're gonna last in what you do. If the why is immediate gratification, you're gonna last for five minutes. If it doesn't come, you'll stop. If the why is short-term or long-term satisfaction, you may last a little bit longer. But the only why behind what we do that makes us able to last all the way through life, with some of the tough things that you have to face in life, is the eternal reward that God will give to us. And so, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like, I'm not going to make it, sometimes the only thing that will get you through is to say to yourself these words, my faith will be rewarded. In John 10:10, 10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anytime we talk about the thief, the devil, you can put the word fear in there. It says resist the devil and he'll flee. We need to learn to resist fear or fear will govern us. You'll raise your kids to give in to fear. Now that doesn't mean that we don't use wisdom. Wisdom and faith go together. But just because I am going to make uh, some good practices to stay healthy, I'm going to do some of the things that doctors have given us, uh, you know, wisdom to do, I'm going to do them. But my faith is in God, and I'm not going to do these things in fear. Wherever you've got fear, good things aren't going to happen. Job 3.25 says, what I fear will befall me, what I dread will come upon me. So fear is never good. Samson was a man who had moral dilemmas. When he was willing to operate by faith, God would supernaturally invade him and use him to take care of the Philistines so that the Bible says he killed 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. And at his ending days, he killed more in his death than he had killed in his life because when God got his attention, he would see the supernatural enter into the natural. The man had some problems. The man had some issues, but he still shows up in Hebrews 11. It didn't nullify the consequences, but what it did say was when you're ready to operate by faith, you can see God show up. I don't know about your yesterday. I do know if you'll live by faith today, God can still use you tomorrow and recognize you for what you have done and achieved by faith. But it must be by faith and faith must precede sight. If you're waiting for sight, it's no longer faith. When you face it by faith, God joins you in it. When you face it by sight, you take care of it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. When God, and watch this, when God tells us to do something and we do it, we strengthen our faith. We strengthen our ability to believe him. We discover that he's for us and he's directing us in the things that we should do. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we encounter a problem that's bigger than our ability to handle, that's when we learn that our own resources are inadequate and that we can truly rely on Jesus till we stop trying to rely on ourselves. God uses problems to deepen your faith and to deepen my faith. Ideally, we reach out to Jesus as the first resort, not the last. Resist all discouragement. If you want to finish what you start, you don't want to get discouraged. If you got to remove the distractions, you've got to uh, remember the reward, and then you have to resist all discouragement. You don't give in to it. You fight it. In fact, I'll tell you right now, if you're going to do anything great with your life, raise up a great family, you're going to have to learn to deal with fear. Raise up a great company, you better learn to deal with fear. Raise up a great church, you're going to learn to deal with fear. Just rise up as a great man, a great woman, you will have to learn to deal with fear. See, fear is not a part of a believer a person who has given their life to Jesus Christ, it's not a part of our nature. Now, you can give in to it, and you'll find your emotions will go crazy. You see, anytime you let fear in, anger will always be the next step. I, I want to revive your faith to let you know that today is the day where we make a decision that our faith is fixed. That there will no longer be this wishy-washy back and forth, maybe God can, but I don't know. Today we decide that we're keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, we're going to trust his promises, we're going to trust his plan, and we will move forward. We have to make a decision. We have to understand that, that when we fix our faith, there are some things that are going to happen. There are situations in your life that'll challenge you, that'll come up and say, I know you said that you're marked and all that stuff, but, but seeing what you do, what God could save you then? Or, or, or seeing how you've handled your finances in the past, what God could bless you now. Or, or seeing how your whole family struggled with this, what God can help you get through that. There are going to be things that will challenge your faith. And we have to accept that if our faith is going to be fixed, there's going to be some challenges. It's part of following Jesus. See, I believe that if we can be a people who believe God in the midst of everything, we can be the people who obtain the better story. And as you do this, as you choose to not let discouragement write your next chapter, don't let fear write one more word in your story. But when it comes, you just say no to fear and say, no, Father God, I trust you. I'm putting you in charge of my money. I'm putting you in charge of my relationships. I'm putting you in charge of my marriage. When I trust God and put him there and I believe God, I'm putting my hand up in the air and I'm joining the likes of Daniel and I'm joining the likes of David and I don't have to have all the gifts and the talents and be just perfect and have all the right degrees but here's what I do have I have faith in God and I'm joining the ancients who obtain the better story that I also am obtaining the better story that you are getting a new story the chapter that you are jumping to right now you're jumping to the page that God has already written for you new things are opening up for you new ideas are coming to you that there's new evidence that hope has become faith in your life and God is manifesting his power in every way imaginable in Jesus name and if you receive it shout out I believe it